Hey everyone, it's Lewis Robertson with Alcove Productions, and if you're anything like me, for a number of years you've been pining over those super cool motorized microphone stands, and you just couldn't quite justify the cost of it. Um, it's something that I've wanted for a long time, but I just haven't really been able to find a scenario that was dire enough for me to spend nearly a thousand dollars. But the other day I was getting quite irritated having to run back and forth between the control room and the live room as I was recording a drum kit, just trying to get the phase correlation between the kick in and the kick out right. Um, same kind of thing, just if you're using one kick drum microphone, you know, how far in versus out do you want to place that microphone? You're kind of going in, guessing, and then coming back out uh, to the control room and trying to listen to it. Um, and so I started looking and seeing, you know, is there another uh, motorized mic stand that's maybe a lot cheaper that just goes forwards and backwards and doesn't do, you know, all of the numerous planes of existence? And I couldn't find anything that was within a reasonable price range. So I started looking and I went online and found a linear actuator with a RF remote control uh, that cost less than 70 bucks and it was a full 24 inch uh, uh, throw uh, for that linear actuator. So that could go the entire depth of a very deep kick drum. So I decided I've got a broken microphone stand that I might be able to uh, attach this thing to. Uh, I think we can do this. And I'm proud to say that we did do it. We have a motorized microphone stand for a kick drum uh, that cost us less than $100 uh, all in. So uh, let's dive into how we did it. And uh, let's start with unboxing the linear actuator itself. Our actuator <clears throat> has arrived. So let's go ahead and open it up. And then uh, we'll test it on the... Uh, bench top power supply uh, and then we'll go from there. Pretty much everything we need. Okay, so I've got this hooked up to my uh, bench top power supply. Uh, pretty straightforward and uh, we're gonna see if this actually works as I think it will. Um, again, should be pretty straightforward. But, uh, looks good to me. Okay, we have a few things to take into consideration in terms of how we're attaching the microphone to the end of the actuator. Um, I'm not too worried about the noise of this being picked up by the microphone directly through the air um, because I'm using dynamic microphones that have cardioid pickup patterns. So it's not listening for sounds behind it anyways and the amount of reflection off of the front uh, drum head is not really that much of concern. Um, what is concerning to me is uh, possible mechanical uh, vibrations transferring into the microphone. Um, so what I did was I hooked up a common kick drum microphone for me, an RE20, um, and I spoke into it while having a direct mechanical connection uh, uh, to the actuator. Uh, and then I did that with a Manly Cozy uh, in between to see uh, what the isolation would do. The isolation certainly helped, uh, but it's really not that big of a deal in either scenario. Um, so. I'm not worried. Uh, the actuator isn't going to be moving while we're recording. It's just for getting tones and identifying the good uh, spot for the microphone, um, whether that be for the microphone on its own or in relation to phase uh, for a kick out mic. Um, so that's a uh, that's really all we need to, to look at. Uh, so now I have to get creative on how I'm actually connecting this. I know I at least don't need to worry about uh, a direct mechanical connection. So um, let's uh, see how we figure that one out. Okay, so to get a microphone attached to the end here, my plan is uh, I want this quick clip adapter to be right on the end there. Uh, to do that, um, 
I'm actually going to use this small little microphone stand adapter um, to screw into the end of the quick clip. And then I got a just a piece of uh, threaded steel uh, that will thread into that adapter. And then this will actually thread into the tip of this. Obviously it'll be shorter, but it'll thread right in. It'll be a nice elegant solution. Uh, so to do this, I have to put uh, threads. I have to drill a hole uh, in the end of our actuator here. Uh, and then I need to tap threads uh, in with it. So uh, this, uh, I'm not really set up to do it, but we're going to do it anyways. And if I completely screw it up, uh, my, my main concern here is going to be drilling uh, uh, straight. Um, I'm not too concerned about it being absolutely perfect because if it's not, it's not the end of the world. But if I really do screw it up, I can always widen the hole a little bit. And <laughs> I've actually got this insert that I can drop the insert uh, into the end uh, just by making the hole a little bit bigger. And it's the same threads as um, the bolt uh, as well. So a couple options, uh, but ultimately I would love to be able to just thread this and be done with it. So. We're going to start by drilling this out. That should be good. Let's clean up this mess uh, and then we'll start uh, tapping the threads. Okay, there we have it. It's time to cut this to length, and then we can attach the other piece on the other side. Uh, probably put a little bit of thread lock uh, on the inside of this as well. Okay, so we have to figure out how this is going to attach to a mic stand. Uh, so I have an old uh, boom arm from a mic stand that uh, has long since been lost to time. Um, and we're going to utilize this, um, I believe. I thought a lot about uh, making a very elegant solution and kind of a form fit piece of metal that will go around this and almost replace this um, uh, top piece of the clutch here. But... Um, Honestly, we're trying to keep the cost down. We're trying to make it simple. It might look a little bit better, but I don't think it would function uh, any uh, any better than what we're going to try here. So my thought here uh, is that we will use this flat piece here uh, and we'll take some pipe clamps uh, essentially on the front and the back here and just use pipe clamps to attach it. Um, now, I don't want to uh, have any mechanical... Um, vibration between the metal pieces uh, and I also don't want things to get scratched up and I would like these to not slip. So for all three of those issues I went to the hardware store and I grabbed um, just some thin rubber um, and I'm going to cut this into strips to use uh, along the uh, pipe clamps uh, as well as between the top of um, our clutch here and the bottom of the actuator. So. Uh, we'll cut this into strips and see how that works. Okay, uh, for proof of concept, uh, this is not bad. There's certainly some stuff to, uh, to work out a little bit, but um, if I had to go into a session today, this would uh, this would hold, this would work. So this mounting solution seems to work uh, beautifully. It's not permanent. Uh, it is hefty. It, I, I can't think of anything that I don't like about it. Minus a little bit the appearance, but honestly, I think I can get past that for $900 savings. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to uh, wire up the actual power supply. Okay, so our power supply came in, um, and we're going to go ahead and fire this up, make sure it works. 
Uh, it's important that when you get a power supply, you get a uh, power supply that is um, regulated. That way when the voltage drops, or uh, uh, when you kind of turn it on, the voltage doesn't drop below the uh, operating voltage. So this is the one I got, uh, came from Mauser. It seemed like a decent size. Our LED is on, uh, which is a good sign. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and read um, what it is that we're getting in here uh, with the load. And we do have 12 volts DC, so that's great. Um, last thing to check here is that it's actually working. Which it is. So all we need to do here is figure out how to make it look nice and make it convenient to put into a single little package uh, and then we'll be good. Okay, so for a metal container, um, I was looking at buying um, a kind of metal project uh, uh, container or box, but um, I finished up a tin of some of my favorite tea uh, the other day and thought, hey, this is a metal container. This will work for now. Uh, we are doing a low cost version of this. Um, and personally, I don't mind if I have a little tin of tea sitting beneath my, uh, my mic stand. Uh, and I can always paint it and uh, uh, put some stickers on it or do whatever I want to do to make it look a little bit more professional. But um, I thought this was kind of a cool little solution. Of course, we're going to have to uh, insulate the interior. Um, actually, I haven't tested the interior to see if it even conducts. There might be a coating in there. Um, okay, the interior does not conduct. We'll still want to um, uh, coat it just to be safe uh, because that uh, coating could obviously scratch off, uh, especially if it's making contact with some copper. So uh, we will coat the interior for another layer of protection uh, and then we'll put the uh, controller and everything in here. We'll drill a hole. Uh, actually two holes so that the cables can come out uh, and we should be ready to rock. All right, I've identified where I want my cables to come out here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill these holes and then I'll feed the cables in uh, and we'll wire it up, uh, make sure the lid is properly uh, insulated. And then we're also gonna figure out a grounding solution here. Uh, I wanna make sure that um, uh, we do have a connection to ground uh, just on this tin. Um, should any of this insulation fail and the tin becomes um, live, uh, I don't want grabbing it to uh, cause any issues. So, All right, I have my holes in the tin. We're gonna feed the wires through and see how we feel about it and then go from there. Well, more or less, this is our product here. Um, for grounding, I did follow proper grounding procedure. I uh, sanded the inside of the tin to make sure we were making good contact. Um, uh, did everything I needed to do and also tested. We have very low resistance between our grounding pin on our plug uh, and the uh, lid of the tin. So that's good there. Uh, the only thing that I think I'll do in addition moving forward is I'll probably put some um, uh, Velcro on the bottom of this and uh, on the stand here just so it doesn't uh, rattle or move around at all uh, when it's in front of a kick drum. Uh, but besides that, uh, we're looking good. Um, the only thing that I had a concern about was I was worried that the metal uh, tin would work as a Faraday cage uh, and block the uh, the RF for the remote, uh, but I'm happy to report we work just fine. Um, all in all, this was a really fun build. It's a uh, uh, you know, little thrown together, little hodgepodgey. Of course, if we wanted to spend a little bit more money, we could make this, uh, you know, spend some money making this look a little bit nicer. Uh, functionally, though, I think it works great. Um, it's super solid. I'm not concerned about anything. Um, and I'm certainly going to get some good use out of it in the studio. Perhaps I'll make it look a little bit nicer uh, in the future. But 
Uh, in terms of a uh, just kind of quick DIY project for a tenth of the price um, of what you would uh, spend on something like this uh, from a manufacturer, um, I'm super happy. This is going to this is going to be super useful. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, please, in the comments, let me know what you thought of this. Let me know if there's something else that you'd like me to uh, kind of jerry-rig together and uh, see if we can make a cheaper version. Uh, see if there are any other studio, uh, common studio issues that we should maybe try to solve with engineering. Um, and with that being said, I will see you in the next video.